I usually have a boy, uh, Cameron, who's usually here chatting it up with me, but today we got a special guest, um, so I thought I'd make some room for him. Um, but who we have today, um, actually let's start off, what's today's date? I don't even know today's date. Today is the 9th, June 9th, already halfway through the year. Gee, that's crazy. All right, well guys, uh, like I said, I have a special guest. What I wanted to do is announce, uh, I would say one of my friends, man. Um, one of the most hardest working guys I know. Uh, he's definitely a, a handyman professional, um, straight pull shark. And uh, to be honest, there's not really much this guy can't fix or build. You know, uh, a guy I look up to when it comes to being a family man and then yet, yet alone, um, just a good guy, man. So without further ado, this is my father-in-law, uh, Ruben Rivera. What's up, Ruben? What's up, man? Thank you for coming out to me. What's up? Coming to hang out. All right, so guys, I got, <laughs> I got my bad, guys. I had technical difficulties, but I do have Ruben in the room. Uh, but yeah, like I said, man, I mean, I, I look up to this guy in a lot of things. So there's uh, some questions I wanted to ask him. Yet alone, I thought I would get you guys informa uh, familiar with who he is because, um, like I said, man, it's an honor to be in his life, yet alone to be a friend of his. And I think he has a lot of valuable information when it comes to... Uh, uh, life um, but another thing that I've learned a lot about him was uh, his pool game uh, but let's start off a little bit back let's go back a little bit um, let me ask you man I mean where, where are you from where, where are you born from originally I was born in Alpine Alpine Texas okay and uh, dad was in the service for 16 years so we saw a lot of country okay Germany New York Wisconsin Missouri just everywhere it was all about growing up yeah yeah I mean a lot of it starts from the history that's why I didn't really want to get too far ahead into the pool talk uh, kind of wanted to you know to have a, a little history on you to see where this game came from how was your upbringing man I mean did you grow uh, up with all of your siblings or just your parents or yeah I got three brothers and one sister okay one brother passed away 11 years ago okay my younger brother 11 months younger than me he was he was a golfer he was a pool player too <laughs> but uh, we all we all walk off into that ozone to where you don't know what family is until they're not there anymore there's no answers or questions for it yeah no i get you i get you on that but you did grow up with all of your siblings together oh yeah home? oh yeah okay and so it was what you plus three other uh children? yeah i was second oldest okay and uh my oldest brother junior then eddie leroy and murray allen but uh we were, we were all challengers okay we all like sports okay so a lot of sports in the house, I'm assuming. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of sports in the house. Baseball, basketball, football, uh, water sports, uh, you name it. Yeah. Nowadays, man, technology kind of has all these kids uh, locked in their room. Wrapped up. We had a lot of talented relatives. Okay. Uh, uncles, aunts. There were some, there were some singers in the family. Uh, a lot of golfers. Something as simple as golf. Uh, simple as pool. Uh, usually, those are around solo sports. Them are pretty much solo if you want, or partner if definitely, you want. Definitely, definitely. But it's better to be a solo than it is a partner in those games. In, in those games, yeah. To, for you to get the recognition that you are. Mm -hmm. But they they'll learn from that. Yeah. I mean, if you belong up there, believe me, you're going to earn it. Yeah, and, or they'll find a way for you yeah. to earn it. Yeah. Well, it seems like sports was a big thing in y'all's past, man. Um, also, music, I know you mentioned uh, musicians. Do you play any, any instruments or anything? I played a bunch of instruments. He's going to pull out his flute right now. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, when I went to work, I went to work. When I had my first child, it was like all that went away. Oh, really? I mean, you, know, you got to take care of your family. Oh, definitely, man. And all them other things were, there was fun. But, you know, like I said, I had one brother that passed away, and uh, he took a lot with him. Yeah. He was a musician. Okay. So a golfer. The, sounds like he was more of a, your competitor. Oh, it was awesome. All our life. That's cool. 11 months younger than me. That's cool. I, uh, I personally don't have any brothers myself. Um, oh, so you you do, yeah. you do. Oh, I definitely with friends and family, but yeah. like growing up, um, I didn't, you know, I didn't have, uh, I guess that sibling, um, not comparison, but the competitiveness. Mm -hmm. Really, the only person I had to compare myself to were my cousins. Uh, then yet alone my dad himself, he would be the one that's like pushing me in all these sports, uh, pushing me in 
fuck anything i wanted to do he, he just supported it you know um which i guess is anything a kid would want you know if they said oh, i want to play football oh hell yeah go play football you know so it was cool uh playing sports as an older kid but honestly growing up i was never the biggest kid nor was i ever the fastest or anything like that so sports didn't really it pursued but once i got to like high school and stuff like that it wasn't as i wasn't as competitive in it than some of these other guys and uh i it just wasn't in me to do it i got lit up one day and i was just like yeah football is i'll tell anybody out there when you're in school play it do yeah. it basketball track all of softball them. baseball doesn't matter try it you might not like it but you'll know you don't like it because you played it you tried it and you're going to find something in all of that race that you're going through in life that you're going to like to do and you're going to be the best at it yeah but it's just kind of like playing pool i watched them you know when i was seven years old or gambling in balmeray texas i watched my uncles and cousins oh we just i mean who who was it in your family that really started that pool in you know that kind of that pool game i mean of course you go to a bar you go to a friend families they may have a pool table but i think it takes somebody to to really kick it your does. ass it does. It does. <laughs> for you to realize there's so much more to the game um so was there anybody in your life that kind of you know influenced pool? Benny ortega Benny ortega yeah my cousin he lived with us in california when we we're on dunbar street and that was back in 74 75 okay and he lived with us for probably five years and had a Cadillac parked outside. Boy, had his cue it. stick, had his hat going on, and he'd come back, he'd have all kinds of money. And I'm like, what in the world? And he said, I had a good night. And I'm like, and he started, we got a pool table. Okay. And he started, he started showing us a little bit about it. But uh, he, he was one of the instigators in that. <laughs> yeah, he was one of the instigators. Okay, is he older than you or younger than you? Oh, no, no, no. He's probably, he's probably 67, 68 right now. Uh, so he was older? Obviously he influenced Oh, no, he was awesome. He was okay. awesome. There you go. Uh, he's, he's like another big brother. Uh, and it takes influence in family. Uh, that's where you feel comfortable. That's where people will, if you're good at what you do, somebody's going to, Notice figure it. that out they're, they're going to go with you and I, I always want to be like him i mean i don't know about the cadillac but you know i know that him he was, he no, was proud hustle. yeah he had his own stick he showed everything and this is this is way back then so you were how old when you kind of got introduced to the game probably about 13 about 13 yeah okay okay so benny kind of came up influence uh, in, introduced you to the game um obviously show the competitive side of ness of of that game so i mean i'm assuming you kind of just picked up the stick started hitting some balls here and there right i did i did i'm gonna i'm not gonna lie to you for probably a year two years i was so young that they barely let me in but i watched a lot of these people play okay snooker tables eight ball tables nine ball tables and they were mostly seniors okay and guess what I found out that it is good to listen to seniors because they know a lot more than you. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> hey, man. I mean, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta know from people that have experienced it. Yet alone, oh, yeah. have yeah. time into the game. Um, it's one thing to have a bunch of experience. Like if I could have probably experienced just as much as you, but the fact that you have more time, maybe triple the time that I do, that's a lot more quality. You know. So it's not. Oh, just... I, w I wouldn't trade any of the time. <laughs> believe me, and I understand yeah no definitely man so okay so benny benny introduced it to you um you started going into these places watching other people play so i mean whenever you got started at what point did you decide like i can make some money for this you know like at what point did you did you did that kind of click? i didn't even, i didn't even know that was there oh really no okay uh, so. i know to be good you had to have money i wasn't like growed up with you know a gold spoon or a silver spoon but still you know i know that you're gonna to have to do something for that money. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I started asking questions. Nine ball was one game, three balls another game, six balls another game, eight balls another game, and there's more games than what you even think about. Yeah. If you get into it professionally. Oh definitely. You know, the more opportunity, the better you are, the opportunities there. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just the bottom line. So whenever you first, um, I would say you started, I guess you could say the gambling side of things, uh, did you go out and kind of scout yourself or was Benny kind of helping you out like, yo, you know? No, I was actually with family, cousins my age, uh, going with our dads, if not our uncles, to uh, somebody's home, barbecue, and they have a pool table or we'd always have a pool table around us. Mm -hmm. And even the piano, mm -hmm. the organ. Mm -hmm. You know, there's Eddie and Murray Allen singing. My my little brother and sister singing at a barbecue. Okay. You know, these are just things that that happened. But it was all about the family because we had pool leagues, we had tournaments, and Dad, we had a nightclub, and live music and everything. We'd have tournaments and pool during the week, and I don't think I ever won any of them. I wasn't allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But okay. Uh, but I had a good time. It was a good time. We served food there. We had four pool tables and shuffleboard. And I was already 22, 23. I was At already. That time. Oh, I was into my game. Okay. Uh, it was uh, it's a learning experience. Definitely, man. It's not just that little ball. It's, it's a mental thing, too. You have to be there. Oh, yeah. yeah. You have to be there. Definitely. Uh, kind of how we were talking a little bit or, you know, before the this little video, man. Uh, what I like about pool is it's primarily a game within yourself. It, it teaches you patience. It teaches you discipline. It teaches you, um, yet alone, challenge. Res respect. And yet alone, respect. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, yeah, you could possibly make that cut ball. And let's say that that cut ball is, an, is the money ball. Or should you try to, you know, there's the options. There's the options. Right. You got to weigh your right. options. And you bear, you bear, basically have to be a very logical person in that game. Um, so, I, you know, I, I truly love the game, man. And that's why uh, over time, um, I kind of realized you had the same love for it, man. And the difference is it's just you, you just have more time behind your belt. Because, um, I, I, you know, getting into the game, seeing how good somebody can possibly be, uh, made me realize, like I said, there's so much more out there to it. It's not a matter of the money. It's not a matter of anything. It's just as long as you enjoy that game and you're playing it to where you want to be. And um, so I'm assuming you probably play alone, right? You don't really play with teams. No, no. Okay. I, I played with the league before and that was fine. But uh, it's a part of the game. Yeah. No, I get you. I get you. So, I mean, let me ask you, man. I, I'm sure this is a, a question that people want to know for people who do eventually play for money. Um, what's the most amount of money you've won on the game? About thirty-two hundred dollars. Thirty-two hundred bucks. And was that one game, or was that a race to five? What, how was that? It was probably about four. Race to four. Four games. Okay. And was it a straight murder? Like, did you just straight kill him, or did you? No, no, no. We went the first game. He won. Then I won. We tied up. And what we ended up doing was playing for whatever was in the pot. Okay. Already at that time, we'd already played three games. I think the first one was a thousand, the second one was 15, and the third one was another 15. And it was for all the marbles. We didn't get paid until I think three weeks later. He didn't have the money on, no, oh. and but he was, he was, I could trust him, yeah. And sure enough, he came up and gave me a check. I turned around and gave it to the wife. She went and had her baby and got her got, got everything in there. Is that right? But you know, okay, that's okay. a part of life. Uh, it's it, it's a good break the ice game. Yeah. You can't do that in baseball. Well, you can, but there's a team. This is not a team. Mm -hmm. So it, it does make a a big big point when you don't have to show anybody they know. The way you, I mean, the way you stroke the stick, the way you put your English, the way you, everything that you do about pool. Those, those people that know, yeah. they know. Yeah, those they the know. Because I'm sure those are going to be the ones that, that are going to be the one to play you. you know, they're the, the one, they're the ones in the back. <laughs> <laughs> They'll okay. be up at the front for too long. So let me ask you this. I mean, obviously when you come into the game, you can't just go into the bar acting like the biggest, baddest wolf, man. Uh, a lot of people know pool sharks, that quote of pool sharks. Um, did anybody kind of show you the ropes as far as the hustling side of things? Was it Benny? Or was it just kind of play and play? I watched. Yeah. And played a lot of games. Okay. Spent a lot of money, a lot of quarters. Yeah. And back in them days. Yeah, they got them quarter tables? Yeah. They, okay. they didn't have this by the hour. Mm -hmm. uh, that was. But right now, there's quarters out there, and that's why I got a pool table at my house. Yeah. So, I don't know if you guys know, but recently we, uh, Ruben, what, somebody... 
donated it to you basically right that mm-hmm. table right uh somebody donated a is it a brunswick yeah brunswick brunswick badass table man. brunswick table but uh eight foot uh four and a half wide and at the time we were just getting into the game or at least i was just getting into the game um he had a six about a six and a half foot in the beginning right yes he had a six and a half foot table we moved it to the garage not even thinking anything of it we're just basically trying to move it from one room to the garage without thinking people would enjoy it more um and you know i'm pretty familiar with uh with the game of pool but at the end of the day when i saw how competitive and how good you were at it man i like i said i realized that there was a different game to it there's a different level to it and uh when somebody donated that table the eight foot table uh i don't know if people know but most of the pool tournaments or bars they do like the eight foot tables maybe eight foot nine foot maybe even up i do know the bigger the table the harder the game gets uh, but like i said somebody donated a table and we thought we'd take it upon ourselves to basically rebuild this pool table and man it came out badass i can easily admit that it came out really sick i don't think either one of us were really anticipating for it to turn out that good but it ended up turning out a lot better than we thought and um and i appreciate the, all the help oh definitely i appreciate that man i appreciate letting me get that opportunity it turned out bad it turned out badass we ended up doing it and honestly since then we've done a couple more pool tables um but so we're going back to that question uh, of course you won 3200 bucks um after that let me ask i mean what would you do with that what'd you do with that money you get married you have children <laughs> your children have children okay and it's time to slow 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 down okay okay and i've been doing that for about 30 years now okay so now it's time to slow down <laughs> did you kind of call it quits did you you know not really pretty play much the game? pretty much it uh if you're not going to be there mentally and try to preach and teach i mean i give it 110 percent every day but you know it's not all about me mm-hmm. and you'll learn that through experience mm-hmm. it's good to be able to turn around and give to somebody else it's kind of like a torch mm-hmm. and the better you are the more you'll talk you oh, know man. you have to feel good about who you are before you tell anybody or even show anybody because it's not about just pull it's not it's not about just the game it's about life you got to wow. enjoy it you got to enjoy it so after that game uh did you just stop going to the bar that was really just it i did okay okay <laughs> you can't cheat and pull but you can that's cheat and pull that's exactly right but that's the cool thing about it man is you, you really can't you know we we know where the ball lays hey you know some people want to don't get me wrong there's times where the tables aren't leveled there's things that aren't leveled and you have to adjust oh i've got you know? 18 levelers on my pool table <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're underground, they're everywhere, on the roof, everything is level, lie. <laughs> but anyway, you look at it, you tell me that pool table's crooked, I'll give you my level. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I don't want to play on shit. Yeah. I know you don't want to play on shit. No. Yep. So we can go to somebody else's house and play on shit. <laughs> because nah. we're not going to play on shit on my table. Yeah, it just, it sucks, man. You go to places, you go to friends, uh, pool tables just suck, you know, because it's not you that sucks and you don't want to be that person like, oh, it's my stick or oh, it's the table. But at the end of the day, dude, like if you're playing on a piece of shit table, what do you expect to? It, it is what it is. I mean, do with what you got. If you really, if we really want to play, try to play snooker. Okay. Big table, little balls, little balls. That's a, that, that. that is a Jeez. game to play. Yeah. If you can put them balls in the hole, the game's over. But I'm telling you, them balls are so little, them holes are so little, the pool table is so big, that when you start making one, you gotta get ready because they're fixing to come. Mm-hmm. I think a bigger table, you're gonna learn more faster on a bigger table than you would a smaller table. That's exactly what I was gonna ask, man, is, you know, if somebody that's wanting to get better and wanting to develop- Snooker table. Okay, snooker table. Snooker table. Okay. Uh, you, you want the biggest impedance that you have in your game from people yelling, hollering, everything. Uh, is that a Mexican shoot? It looks like a, no. It really is. I said, hey, que paso? But you know, it's just, it's just one of them things, you know, you got to have fun. Yeah. And people are going to talk. And it doesn't matter what color you are. What matter is, you got a pool stick, you got a cue ball, the life is yours. Take it. That's that's one of the main things that I love about the game, man. Is it doesn't matter your age. You could be young. You could be mid-40s. You could be fucking 70. 
um that's you awesome be, you can be a you know fucking asian you can be hispanic not a lick of english um yeah and you know all, you really you know, don't need any muscle you don't need anything no exactly you just got to have a good mind you got to have a big heart yep. you got to do what you're going to do and it's going to make you feel good make it feel right so that's like i said with with everybody being age race whatever it's 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 a cool thing to have to be that broad with the game and to, to have that connection with a person that doesn't speak english a person that can't add you know what i'm saying and you like, know, they still love the game. i have some people come to the house and i play one-handed better than i do two-handed sometimes mm -hmm. and they look at me and like me why why are you making fun of us i'm just comfortable you know, I, I'm just comfortable when I do that one-handed. It's not showing off. It's just something that I feel inside because it is hard to do it one-handed. Mm -hmm. But I made, I make, I make my stuff. Yeah. And I have fun doing it. And it's not about making fun of anybody or anything. It's about the game. Sometimes we get bored with life. We start kicking rocks. We hurt our toes. Don't hurt yourself no more. Or you're gonna go to the doctor. But you know, at the same time, it's kind of like kind of like playing pool you know you're going to do it over and over and over and you're going to start making it making it but you have to practice you have to want it mm -hmm. anything that you do in this in this lifetime you can leave a mark somewhere but you have to feel good about it mm -hmm. because people are going to know yeah minnesota fats moscone all of them i used to watch them when i was seven eight years old she at moscow and cup i watched that no 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 no, no. i watched yeah. him uh it, it was awesome and doc dodgers you know baseball with with dad and benny uh good life yeah good yeah. life so you know for people that want to you know get started get better snooker table you recommended them oh yes. um does it matter eight ball nine ball does it matter about no, that you play snooker snooker yeah you use the little chippies on the top not with the button in your hand mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying you take the pool stick and take the uh, the score what is the it? little markers markers and push them off one side you know how to do it <laughs> <laughs> but you don't cheat the worst thing you can even think about doing is cheating snooker game is a beautiful game once you master that then you can go to the eight ball if you go to the six ball you're re you're really hard up on the bar mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. six foot table, you might be back there in the alley somewhere. Primarily, I know uh, something that helped my game a lot was uh, a biggest goal that I had was to was to break and run. Um, that was just, it doesn't matter if I can make a straight in shot every time, but my goal was to do a break and run. That's, that's just, I think that's what helped me um, just practice and want to get better each rack. Because one thing I love about pull, each rack, each break is never the same. That's never the same. Each each break is a different puzzle to solve. And when you solve that puzzle, you won, you know? And with break and runs, why I like that is because it's a different puzzle every single time. You know, and you gotta figure out that puzzle. When you figure out that puzzle, not that it's handed to you, but you just have a different discipline towards the game, you know? And that's just how, I, that's just me. You know, that's just how I ended up just trying to progress in the game because if I couldn't break and run, I'd re-rack them, break. If I couldn't break and run, re rack and break. And for positioning, uh, when it came to trying to set up for the next ball, um, that helped me a lot. And what helped me even more, though, was nine ball. When, once you go to the one ball, you go to the second ball. Once you go to the second ball, you go to the third ball. So that, that helped me. Um, anything specific really help you kind of with positioning or anything like that? Or was it just playing? Family. Family. You have to have family. You have to have friends. Uh, a lot of places you go, you're not going to go... 110 percent by yourself mm -hmm. you're gonna go with the cousin with the brother with with a, a live bodyguard it doesn't matter you're gonna go with somebody that you trust until you find that trust or have to pay for the trust or whatever it whatever means more to you mm -hmm. then that would be part of your life yeah you know that's one of them things that uh, you have to understand uh, it's just a game it's just a game. Learn the game. Don't use it. Don't abuse it. Enjoy the game. Mm -hmm. uh, not that easy. And it's not that hard. Yeah. Anything you like playing specific? Eight ball? Nine ball? Six ball? Like, what's your favorite? I like playing my my wannabe son-in-law 
in eight ball. <laughs> last ball, eight ball. Yeah. Last ball, eight ball. <laughs> no, the last ball, eight ball makes that challenge. Did I say that? Want to be? Is that? Is that what, <laughs> oh, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> they, they have them in kangaroo in Australia. No. <laughs> That's funny. Somebody got to pick on you, so, man. But, I mean, what do you like? What do you like to play, though? What do you enjoy? I know you enjoy winning. Let me put it like if I play the eight ball, it's too easy. Okay. I will run. I, I, I'm always thinking. Yeah. What, that the balls are worth it, anything. Yeah. But you know, you take that cube. Uh, I could tell you so much, but there's a lot to it. Yeah. Yeah. Once you see it, and you believe it, and you understand it, you have a system. So as far as now, I guess the plans are just hold back a little bit and see when, when we can get started in something. Well. I put it in God's hands and I just say one thing. I'm not done yet. And I don't think my wife is. And I think if I can make $150,000 a year and go from town to town and what I've been talking to her about, she doesn't know. But she's going to hear about it. <laughs> uh, I, would, I mean, honestly, I would love to get her on here. I don't know if she'd be... No, she's powdering her nose. Oh, is she? Oh, okay, okay. I thought I would try to get her out here, see if maybe she can at least say hello to the camera, show her face a little bit. But uh, let's see if we can uh, make that happen. Yeah, she's coming around. Oh, she? yeah. I've been not saying anything else, ladies. Here, let's, you want to get her in a headphone so she can hear me? Oh, we got to use the same headphone. Yeah, oh, no, my God. Can, it's not like you, she has everything else. Can you hear me on that side? Oh, yeah. Nice. I can hear you talking. And it? sing a little song. You can, you can. <laughs> but no, I mean, I, I, Joan Rubin is basically just informing me on, uh, of course, the pool history of you guys going out to bars, enjoying your time, yet alone, hey, winning some money. I just thought I would get everybody to say hello. See I the. We we're going to be talking for five hours. See the lovely wife. I mean, hey, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, Ruben has a passion for the game. Um, him wanting to hustle out for it, make some money from it. Yes, he can make some money for himself, but at the end of the day, who's who's a lovely lady that he's making the money for you know what i'm saying I mean, honestly the money making part was always an accident yeah like chicken here she can um here. it was more like we we'll go have some drinks maybe eat a burger mm -hmm. start playing ended up to something else and you know it's never him that initi initiate <laughs> that in initiates the money part but they're like Let's play for some money, you know? Mm -hmm. And then it's like, it just ends up going and going and going. And then... Let me ask you, do you uh, do you get nervous? Yeah, well, I cheer him on most of the time. And and then all of a sudden, like, the whole table's full of beers and <laughs> drinks. And I'm just like, what are we going to do we with all We do not this? party, honey. No, we don't even drink. No. Yeah, like, I don't, I don't, like, it's too much. Like, it, it gets out of hand. Yeah. Can I get a shot of bourbon, please? <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. I've, a table like this, I've seen it completely full of beers and that we've won, mm -hmm. you know, and or drinks. And I'm just like, what are we going to do with all this? You know, we just leave. <laughs> it's oh, like... His tab. Yeah, and yeah. they just keep buying and buying. I'm like, it's just us, too. So I just start giving them away. But it's just accident. Yeah. It's not like we plan that. Yeah, you, you know? go there specifically to do it. But most people are there to do that. Mm -hmm. So And then they start getting mad because they're losing, and they do it again, and they do it again. And they just keep losing. Yeah. So here comes this next person. I can beat them, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> yeah. Just like... Well, that's why I'm asking you. I mean, like, because if I was to go to the bar with him and, and that was to happen, I mean, I would be in your to in your shoes. You right. know what I'm saying? That's why I'm asking because so it was never uh, intentional. You never went out there like, oh, we're going to. Oh, no. No. Never. Okay. okay. I, I mean, now one time we won a lot of money and I was. She said we. I see that. <laughs> she said we. And I say <laughs> we because I was pregnant with Erica. Okay. And I was saving money f to buy this big nice canopy bed you know for her baby bed you know and this guy he was just trying so hard to beat reuben oh, like really? all night he would not let up and people were like dude dude you can't just keep up. i mean and he was like this rich guy like and i was like honey just let him win he's like no <laughs> he wants to <laughs> he's like he's like he wants to play with, for money now and it started it was like a hundred and then it was 500 and then it was just more and more and i was just like oh my god this is getting ridiculous you know and the big crowd started coming around all of a sudden he's like 
I'm just gonna write you a check, man. Like me personally, I feel like I would get nervous. And it's not because I doubt him or I doubt his game. It's just, it just gets that much more serious. Yeah, and it gets kind of scary. You know, people start looking at you and, and people get mad. Mm -hmm. So when the game, game of pool gets real scary is when you're not serious. Because when you get too serious, other people, it's just a serious game. And you got to have family around you. Yeah. My wife was always with me. Yeah. That's why I thought I would try to get her on here. Yeah. Right? I mean, so we got the check. And I was like, we still, well, still I say we because I, I, he gave it to me instantly. He was like, here you go. Here's for your baby bed. It was perfect. The guy said, good job. He's like, take me to court for the rest. He still owed him more than that. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> we were oh, like, we're good. Pissed as fuck. <laughs> Bank account empty. I got her baby bed. And after that, we left and I was like, honey, honey, let's go somewhere else. <laughs> I was like, let's go get some bars, <laughs> I was so excited. I was like, wow, you are the man. Like, I ain't never seen nothing like that. That was so awesome. You know, and we knew the guy. We still were friends with him after that. Mm -hmm. You know, and everybody. Oh, yeah, I gave him two weeks to pay. <laughs> <laughs> He's my friend. He came yeah. up with a check to pay my wife. Jeez. But it was, it was, um, you know, we never did that on purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it was always, you know, just... It's just almost, it's a part of the game. Mm -hmm. It's a part of the game. And when you're to that level, I feel like those people know that's the only way to play him is to play for money. I mean, like I said, I get the luxury of playing for free, you know, and a lot of people don't. I hear a lot of people at the bars, they have to pay to play this guy to get their ass whooped. Right. And I know? don't think that they, I don't think this guy wanted to stop, you know, and the way he kept get playing with him, because there was quarters everywhere, the only way that he could was to keep it interesting, right? So keep them there. Yeah. Keep them so everyone there. was like, "Yeah, go ahead." <laughs> so go how ahead. far? How far were you whenever that happened in your pregnancy? Uh, probably oh, about si yeah. About seven I was months. pretty close. Oh, yeah. Man. So you're at the bar, about to pop. He went in the buddy. Yeah. And I and I started noticing when it was, when I um, would see like it was going to be a problem because people would be like. Uh, you're a bull shark, aren't you? And when they start that, it was like, what Wait. the heck? <laughs> Can you get Odie over here? He's just trying to make it. He's play. mad at her because she she put he his wants coat to get on. Into the picture. He's like, bro, I want to be in the podcast. <laughs> Why? What did she do? <laughs> He's tattletelling. Oh, He's like, look, I have a coat on me. <laughs> so, um, so let me ask you. I mean, how do you feel if he was to get back into the game? Like, just not hustling, not anything dangerous, but just playing the game. I mean, do you see that he enjoys to play the game? Well, that's just the thing er, that, you know, when people see somebody good like that, he's automatically, a, you it's know, a good game. yeah, they watch even when they're playing other tables, mm -hmm. they watch each other's table, you know, mm -hmm. and it's like sometimes all the tables are busy except for the one that he's at. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, they just don't. <laughs> <laughs> do you see do you see people that used to scout him or at least look at him from a distance while he's playing and i'll tell him yeah i'm like that guy he, he either wants to play or he don't you know yeah and i didn't push anybody yeah i mean you can't you and know? he'll you say he'll say let's just go and i'm like i want to watch you play he's like hey, i want to play because you know they've already seen him yeah. beat someone else yeah so i guess from this point, Miss Erica was born. I guess from that point forward, correct? <laughs> yeah. Oh, so y'all y'all signed up for something? I guess crazy, huh? Double trouble. So, yep. So from there, Ruben, I guess stopped playing the game, and y'all guys started a family and stuff like that. Oh yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Let's talk. Let's put the topic on Erica. How was uh, how was Erica as an infant? Oh man, Erica was never an infant. She was a little bit busybody. Yeah. She was. Uh, Talking full seats. sentences when she was two. Out the womb. I mean, she just she practically had teeth overnight. Yeah. Damn. That's why she got a beautiful smile now. That's Look at them right. perfect teeth. That's right. Honestly, she got your teeth. I see the I see your teeth in her teeth. <laughs> I see that. So I mean, so what? She was a smart child. She was a smart we, kid. We don't need to be talking about teeth right now. Very so I'm smart. getting a bite of this. Very smart. Nice, nice. I mean, well, I know she had younger siblings, so I mean, obviously she had to. She taught them everything. She just had to grow had up a little talk. fast. Yeah, she was a little mama for a little while. That's she didn't cool. like it though. No? 
What, she didn't like babysitting? You know, we, you know, computers came out pretty popular when she was a little kid, mm -hmm. and we got one. And we didn't know nothing about a computer. Came home, and she, she knew everything about that computer. Everything. She stayed up all night. Yeah, she's smart. Yeah, she's all right. <laughs> she's all right. <laughs> <laughs> nah, even still to this day, she's very smart. I know you talk a lot about her whenever she was a kid. That's why I thought we'd just ask a quick question. Like, I mean, I see uh, she's still smart to this day, man. She's a really yeah. good person. I truly love her. And honestly, that's that's taught. It's taught. I mean, you can't. Mm -hmm. The apple don't fall far from the tree. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I see both of y'all. Y'all are good people. So, I mean, I don't expect her to be anything less, you know, than great. And I'm sure Thank you. I'm sure she uh, so she nice. could say the same, right? Right. She's, she's a little ambitious. <laughs> I wonder Maybe a little bit more than a She's little. a great kid. No, she's definitely, but, man. I know, but awesome. she's on the right track. She's on the right track. That's all she needs to do. Doing what she does, what she likes. Let me ask y'all this. I mean, how would y'all feel if y'all found out Erica was too much pregnant? Well. <gasps> oh, my gosh. How would y'all feel about that? <laughs> what? You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> how would y'all feel about that? Did you do this on purpose? <laughs> <laughs>